Oh. Nice big training pot. Um, plenty of room for the roots to grow, plenty of room to develop the tree. Uh, I don't I don't see the reason to have hugely expensive pots sitting on the bench for the possibility that they're going to get knocked over or burned down or a tree fall on them because my neighbour's trees have fallen down smashing a very expensive pot and maybe ruining a very nice tree when they're in training if I go to show it I will probably invest in a nice show pot um, and a cheap pot of the same size and dimensions and it will spend its life on the bench in a cheap pot in the same size and dimensions and when I show it it will go into its show pot I believe it's how the Japanese do it they show pots for showing their trees and growing pots for growing their trees Some people will disagree with me, and some people will not disagree with me. But it's the way I do things, and I personally think within bonsai, if your trees are happy and you are happy, then what other people think doesn't matter. It works for me. I think that's the best philosophy. I think I've cut that wire too short. Build a mountain inside the pot. Do you know what, every time I repot this tree, I always seem to repot it that way. Um, I just I think my brain is trying to tell me that this should be the front, but it's not. <laughs> it's been grown from this one. That might be a bit too low actually. Too low now, but I've got the general idea where everything goes. Put that down there. This pot, this tree is back in this pot because of the size of the pot. Um, it, uh, it probably won't come out of there for another four or five years, and at least three years. They are quite vigorous. Let's see if I've got the height right. I'm 
the twist. It's just a, a pushing the roots and the base into the soil. I'm trying to get it on a little flat surface. I'm just trying to make sure I got that lean right. What I'm doing, do, I'm just going to lift this up onto its turntable. I always find myself doing, especially in the past, it's because I'm a bit of a cheapskate. I try and use as thin as I possible my trees in the pot because wire is very expensive. And it's false economy really because the amount of times I've done this. snapping on me and I've only shot the process all over again. Right, I think that's not too bad. And I know some of you will be saying, oh, oh you've got your wires up against you, the roots. But see, to me, that's always going to be below the surface of the roots, uh, below the surface of the soil. So if that does bite in there, it's going to, all it's going to do is send roots out over the top, which means that I can remove the piece that's underneath it. So eventually, that's going to go into the soil and have roots coming out of it. The same there, the same there. I think the last time I did it, I actually had a um, a piece of electrical tubing. This is electrical wire, two two core wire. I pull the wires out, makes ideal. Um, pad for when you've got wire, I had the wire going over there, but it's ugly. You know, I, I'd like to use the black, but I only had white last year, so I had to use what I got. So that's it, that's it back in its pot. Now it's going to be the very long and laborious job of filling in between the gaps. So again, I tried to show this on the other video, oh my head, excuse my head, shall I say, is I take a chopstick, and these are the ones I clear the soil out with, but what I like to do is I just thin it down, take off the point so I'm not stabbing anything when I'm going in there. I just, I don't know if it, if it makes any difference or not, I just think if you put a smaller point on it, you can get between all these little fine roots and work your soil in. Well, I think it looks like I'm going to have to do another mix. Right, I'm just going to try and position it so you can see what I'm doing. Let me just turn this off. 